with Mike Singer from the Denver Post. Hey, Michael, good to see you. When you are facing a team that is going up against elimination, how do you get your guys to match that urgency? I mean, we kind of talked about just going into game four. Um, you know, I go back to last season. Uh, we were on the other side of this. You know, we faced, I think, seven uh, elimination games last year in the bubble. Uh, we're in six and one. Uh, we know this will be the toughest game in the series, Mike. Uh, and we know that we'll have to play our best game of the series in order to give ourselves a chance to win this game. Um, obviously, the backs are against the wall. It's win or the season's over. Um, so our mindset is let's not approach this with the mindset of, hey, it's okay if we lose. We have game seven at home. Uh, you don't want that thought in the back of your mind. You want this being uh, this is a game seven for us. Uh, we have to do everything we can to win this game and not rely upon going home. Um, so uh, hopefully that guys understand that. I think we'll be able to tell very early on where our minds are at, where our hearts are at, where our bodies are at. Uh, but, you know, I, I expect this to be another really hotly contested game. It's amazing to me after five games, uh, this series is a three-point differential. They've scored 602 points in five games. We've scored 599. Uh, two evenly matched teams, teams that know each other well. Uh, so I expect a uh, just another classic uh, game today that will probably hopefully go down the wire uh, and we can give ourselves a chance to steal it. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach. Um, we're just talking about the urgency there, but, but what are the building blocks of working, of playing against a team that has come out with their hair on fire when, when they're, when they're, what are the building blocks of weathering that storm um, tangibly there on the court? Well, I would say the building blocks are don't weather the storm. I have a hit first mentality. You know, uh, you hear people all the time say, hey, we have to match their physicality. Or we have to match their urgency. I say, screw that. I don't want to match anything. I want to exceed it. I want, I don't want to be a counter puncher. I'm stepping into the ring tonight. I'm having a hit first mentality. Get them on their heels first. Don't play from behind. Play with the lead. That has to be our mindset uh, because obviously this crowd is going to be going crazy today. Um, so for me, Demps, it's, it's all about coming out, hitting first, understanding that we have to be more physical, we have to be more aggressive, and we have to be the more urgent team, regardless if we're up 3-2, regardless if we have the option to go home and play a game seven in our home court. We've been there before. We've done that. It didn't go well. So you can't rely upon that. You know, try to take care of the task at hand, and that is winning game six in Portland. Uh, a hell of a challenge, an exciting challenge for, for a really uh, young group like we have. Ryan Blackburn, Denver State. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Austin Rivers. Uh, I'm sure if I – told you two months ago that he would be playing 47 minutes in a game five, you would have told me I was insane. Uh, what about his skill set? What about his mental makeup has prepared him for this moment and given you confidence to put him in this situation? Well, if anybody would have told me that Austin would be playing 47, that Faka would be starting, and then I'd be playing Shaq Harrison and Marcus Howard in the first round, uh, I'd buy you all a drink <laughs> if you really felt that was going to be the case. And that's why this series is so interesting to me. Um, you know, for some reason, people don't understand that we have a young man in Jamal Murray who averaged 30 points a game last year in the bubble in the playoffs, uh, who's not available. You have Will Barton, you have P.J. Dozier. Yet we continue to find ways to be competitive and win games. Uh, that's what I love about this group. Uh, regarding Austin, you know, when we got him, the exciting thing about him was, you know, yes, he's on a 10 day contract, but he's not your typical 10 day player. We all realize that he's a young man that had 45 playoff games under his belt. He had been in big games before, played big roles on teams before. Uh, and the reality is what's giving me confidence to play him right now. Uh, and this is going to sound cold. I have to play him. Who, who, who do you want me to play? We have three of our top guards out in Jamal, Will and PJ. Um, but to play him 47 minutes or 37 minutes, whatever it was, he goes out there. We don't win game three without Austin Rivers, 16 points in the fourth quarter. We don't win game five at our place without him scoring, I think, 18 points, uh, dishing out 
seven assists, knocking down four more threes. And I will say he played good defense. The guy scored 55 points, but I thought Austin gave a uh, an, an honest effort in terms of guarding one of the more difficult players in the league to guard. So um, we've been decimated by injuries on our perimeter. Austin was a godsend. He's played really well for us, and he's shining in these playoffs. So uh, very happy for him. James, James Hill, BNC Sports. Hey, Coach, uh, this is that time of year that uh, NBA players and coaches and teams really look forward to competing. Uh, can you talk about the marathon aspect and uh, fighting through uh, mental fatigue, physical fatigue, and, and guys are, are ready? Hello? Hang on, we'll unmute him here. Go ahead, James. Oh, Coach, uh, James Hill, uh, can you talk a little bit about the marathon aspect? Uh, guys, uh, teams, coaches, everybody in the league is, is really looking forward to this time of year, uh, fighting through the mental fatigue, the physical fatigue, a long series, and, and just going out and playing um, some great basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, when you ask that question, for some reason, I think about Brad Stevens in Boston. Uh, and I saw, I believe he said something to the effect that this year was really hard on him in light of coming right out of the bubble. And, you know, Brad and I have talked a lot um, leading up to the season and during the season about how us in Boston were down in the bubble the same amount of time. You know, we got to the Western Conference Finals. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals. We both lost. And then you turn right back around and come into this season. This season was unrelenting. Um, I, I was joking with Michael Green this morning. We're getting tested at 8 a.m. Some nights we get tested at 11 o'clock p.m. Uh, I can't wait for the day when I can wake up and I don't have to worry about what time I got to go down to the arena to get another damn test. Uh, I think this year has been the hardest year uh, in my 20 years in the NBA. I'm sure for a lot of our players because um, it's the mental toll, it's the physical toll, the emotional toll. Um, but now you get to the playoffs. You know, you, you grind it through 72 games to get to the playoffs. And that's the best time of the year, to your point. The competition, guys competing, guys going after it. Um, that's what it's all about. Uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, especially in this series, I mean, this is such a close series, as I mentioned, three points uh, are, are separating us after five games. So this game will come down to who can make the least amount of mistakes, who can be the most disciplined team, who can execute under pressure? And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going out there because you find something out about your team every time you go on the floor. So I'm hoping that we can see some guys step up and embrace this opportunity uh, because it's it's going to be a tremendous one. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Well,